Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Alienware's Law Lessons of Saint. And today we're going to be showing basically pros versus Joes and what gives the pro players that edge. So today to help us out, we have Dr. Issa with us who's going to help us run some te Wait, what are you reading? Oh, no. It's a nice Ezreal statue. You think I can have it? No. Why not? It's mine. Oh, okay. Well, you don't get to know what I'm reading. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Amin Issa, and I have a PhD in biomedical engineering. I study human physiology with a focus on extreme environments and mobile technology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I grew up my entire life playing video games. There's nothing I love more and uh, I'm very passionate about them. I even uh, had a stint in competitive gaming with Fnatic in uh, 2004. I'm out here with Curse and we're trying to figure out what separates a great player from a good player from an average player. And they ask that question all the time in sports. What separates great players from good players? And you hear people talk about athleticism versus game intelligence. And so that's what we're here trying to figure out. So a lot of people out there uh, in the community, they have this idea that, oh, I can't get the challenge or I can't get the diamond. I, I can't get higher because I just don't have the mechanics. Today, like, we want to go through a couple series of tests to prove otherwise. And uh, we have Dr. Easy here. Uh, he's going, I said your name wrong, didn't I? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're with Dr. Issa. Yeah. And uh, he's going to help us out with some of our tests. So what did you bring to, to help test uh, out the mechanics? Well, first, I, saying I hope you're wrong because my mechanics are god awful and I hope I don't stay stuck in platinum and I can eventually <laughs> get the diamond. But some of the stuff we're, the first thing we want to look at to test the mechanical skills of the players is um, we brought a cognitive test with us. It's a, almost a, a more uh, mathematical version of whack-a-mole. Basically, we, me we measure your hand-eye coordination your speed, your accuracy, and your response time. Basic physical skills that you would see in League of Legends. I think that pro players, the reason why they're pro players and why they're good is because they, they look at all the information they have in front of them, they look at the map, and they make larger scale decisions and like they make better micro decisions than your average player. And I don't think that it, the mechanics have as much to do with it. Right. Um, I think that that's actually very interesting. This is an eye tracking device, and I like to think of it as a as a gateway into someone's brain. If you see where they're looking when they're playing a game like League of Legends, you can see what they're thinking. So how, do, how does this work? Well, so it's really interesting technology. It basically shoots infrared at a person and detects, it works off your corneal, reflect, corneal reflection. So um, you basically use calibration to, to locate the pupils mm -hmm. and it'll find the pupils. And then from there, we know where the screen is and where your eye should be looking. Okay. This actually works quite well. And so that way we'll figure out where you're looking in the game and we can track that second by second, match that up with the footage and see when a team fight happens, um, what are you doing? Are you looking at your own hero? Are you looking at your cooldowns? Are you frozen off into space, which happens to me all the time? <laughs> so, you know, yeah. what, what happens? Well, I, think, I think personally that a lot of the lower tier players are going to be looking at things that they're not comfortable with, like, oh, is my ultimate up? Like, oh, is my stun up? And they're going to be getting flustered and yeah. looking at the things that aren't directly impacting them in the fight, and then they might just get like nailed by a Morgana Bind and die if they're the carry. Because they're right. looking at things that they don't fully know. Because as a pro player, you play thousands of games, and, you're, and you just feel it. You're like, well, I, I already know my, my Caitlyn that's going to be up. Like, it's been eight seconds, so you're, you're feeling it in the back of your mind. So it's you're almost not like gonna, muscle memory for yeah, an athlete, right? Yeah, it just becomes muscle memory, and I think that's, that's what you're going to see with this. I think that's going to go a lot into our third question is, you know, do our pros uh, less prone to being stressed out in these like high, high, high tension situations where you're in like a big team fight or, or you're in a smite, a smite war or, or uh, just anything. You, you know a lot about you're those, late. right? No, 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 no <laughs> not me, no. I, I mean, I think that people like me and news will also, you know, when they get ganked, they, they get flustered. Yeah, their heart rate But for you, it's like, the roof. you've probably been ganked a million times, probably died half a million and you know the game goes on. It's not yeah, a big deal, it's, it's not the end of the game. It just really comes down to just you you almost expect it. You're like, yeah. well, that guy, like, I knew he was there. I just yeah. I just died. Yeah, that happened, I guess. But I I, I st so it's okay to die, right? Oh, sure. Okay. But because <laughs> I have like I have liquid in the house, and he sits next to me when he plays, and like 
He's the most like really twitchy, like, he's like oh, oh yeah. Oh my god, he like starts like having a panic attack I think we, while he's we, playing. I think we've got a heart rate recording of Liquid. We'll have to take a look at that later. Yeah, that'll be that'll be comedic gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all you right. want to go to the lab and test all these things out? Let's go play. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we're at the USC Game Pipe Laboratory, and we're testing a bunch of League of Legends players. If you miss the square, it's gonna like take away from your score. Uh, if you click the little squares, it's gonna give you more score. There's gonna be yellow squares that pop up. If you click the yellow square, it'll make a blue square come up, and that gives you even more points. So basically, you don't want to miss because that'll like make your score lower. Mm -hmm. And just click the squares as they come up. My name is John Valencia. I'm a high diamond metal support player, and today I did a clicking base test. It was pretty fun. At first, I'm like, oh shit, I'm doing really bad. Uh, later on, though, I started um, after I moved the speed to something I was comfortable with. I realized that okay, I'm getting better. And after the test, after, like now that I'm thinking about it, I realized like League of Legends is not very much about clicking; it's about decision making. So I'm not. I don't put myself down just because my score isn't that high. Because I'm still high level. <laughs> huh, Steve, you're not bad. Huh. <laughs> 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 Jesus, so much pressure. No, no pressure, you just relax. Yeah, just chill. What? <laughs> oh, he's still warming up. <laughs> Ain't no thing. <laughs> you're clicking 200 things per minute. No. Oh. And you're doing it right. So that's that's impressive. Okay. And I think that if the. If I, well, it's, it's not I, bad. No, it's oh it's actually the best we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sounds good. <laughs> I admit it. So you can go change. But this shirt, you put it on, and it has these two hockey pucks. Uh, places where we'll put the cores. I don't want to pull out the cores here, but it's going to measure your heart rate, how much you're sweating, your galvanic skin response. They use that in lie detector tests. And um, your temperature and your breathing rate, all from the shirt. And so from that, we're going to try and see how you stress out when you play. So I'm going to plug these in and we'll send you in to try and put this on. It's a super tight fit, but if you can zip the zip, then you're good. So this machine here is an eye tracker, and it's going to tell us where you're looking. All right, so we're back at the curse house. Uh, you want to take a look at the data? All right, let's just tap on the computer. I've made some preliminary charts and graphs from the data we collected. So let's see what we got. Yeah, let's see. So let's take a look at the difference between pros and Joes in their mechanical skill. We use a test to measure hand-eye coordination, speed, reaction time, and accuracy. If you take a look at the graph here, we're going to see that the Joes are in red and the pros are in orange. And there's really only about a hundred point score difference between them, which really isn't meaningful. If we take a look at APM, the next thing, also there's about a 10 APM score difference, which again isn't very meaningful. So if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the individual scores. We're going to start with the first one, who has a Platinum 1 score of about 1900. And the next person is Voiboy, slightly under that, and then another Platinum 1 player, and then Violet of StarCraft II fame. And if we keep going, we'll see that you have a Diamond 1 and then a Silver 3. If we keep going down the line, we'll see that we have about four other Challenger players, all from Team Curse, and then we'll finish off with a Browns who says, I'm sorry. <laughs> it really doesn't have to be sorry because they're higher than the next person, which is a diamond four. So the conclusion we can make is that your mechanical skill has little to do or less than what most people think than with your ability to climb the League of Legends ladder. Let's take a look at this video where we used eye tracking software and hardware to follow a player's gaze and see what they do. I'm going to apologize in advance for the quality and resolution of this video. 
we were limited by the tools we were using. Let's take a look here. This uh, Lucian 4 is a Diamond 4 AD carry. The red dot is his gaze and where it's fixated. What you'll notice through the video is that the size of the dot determines the length of fixation and how long he spends staring at that. I'm going to start the video and let's see what happens. Here we see him targeting creeps, and all of a sudden he's going to get jumped by Rengar, and he's going to look at Rengar, and he's appropriately going to move back. Let's pause here. Now he is looking at his ally, probably for support, but he's going to make a series of decisions. He looks at his cooldowns, targets Rengar, sees Rengar go away, fixates on Gragas, who's getting hit by the tower. Watch how he's just going to watch Gragas, look at himself to see how he can go over the wall, but mostly just look at Gragas and escapes with a sliver of health. What you'll notice is that he didn't look at anything else during this fight. Nothing despite all the action going on in the side with Lee Sin and was oblivious to his surroundings. Let's compare this to Voiboy in a team fight. Now I want you to keep in mind that I have seen this over 20 times and I have the ability to pause and see what's going on. And I'm still going to have trouble keeping up in this video. What you're going to see at the start of the video is that Voiboy is going to be scanning for potential targets in the enemy team while being noticing his own position and his team's position. Ari is hooked by Nautilus. Voiboy immediately sees this and acquires her as a target. Immediately sees Evelyn and notices her ultimate and then pays attention to who got hit by it. Moves back, dodges Cho'Gath's rupture, then looks for targets again, immediately acquires Vayne, moves in to attack Vayne. Then he decides that Vayne's gone. He's going to switch back immediately to Cho'Gath. If I wasn't pausing, I wouldn't be able to catch that. Sees Vayne come back again, acquires Vayne, kills Vayne, turns around, acquires Nami and kills her, and keeps attacking Cho'Gath. It's the safest while being mindful of his position and of even CS. And still keeping his position in mind and the enemy position. Sees Nautilus' hook, immediately goes in for that. Remember, he's playing solo queue, so he's not on vent. Now Evelyn immediately pops up, Boy Boy reacts quickly to it, flashes out of the way, hides back. Here he cannot flash in time to dodge the rupture, but eventually he also dies. Now what I want you to be mindful of is just the sheer amount of information that he can take in and process compared to the Diamond 4 ADC we saw earlier. Let's take a look at how different players cope with stress in-game. For this purpose, they were wearing a monitoring shirt that recorded heart rate and breathing rate. So first thing you're going to notice is that the scale is a bit distorted in this image due to the artifact when putting on or taking off the belt. So Voidboy has a resting heart rate of about 90, and what you'll notice is that the deviations in his heart rate don't go above 10, maybe 15 beats per minute, solid all the way throughout. But if we take a look at the next player from Team Curse, Cop. You'll notice that he has about the same resting heart rate of about 90, but he has these large spikes, which are about 50 beats per minute deviation. This area here is likely him uh, moving around, and we don't know if uh, the belt fit him as precisely as it should have because we didn't have the smallest size to fit Cop's skinny frame. Now, um, let's take a look at someone who is a non-pro. This is Steve, the manager, and he has a much lower resting heart rate, sitting at about 80, but he has numerous spikes, about 11 of them. And these spikes likely represent stressful team fights and ganks. And what I also want you to know is that the spikes in breathing rate, and what they mean is that there are places where he's actually holding his breath, which is a common response to a stressful situation and trying to execute. What we can conclude from this is that we don't really know the optimal physiological rhythms for a player to be at when in stressful situations. Some people function well and calm, cool, and collected under pressure, and it reflects in their biometrics. But other people need the adrenaline to accelerate their decision making and to galvanize them into the optimal zone. So Doc, what well, we really found out that pros and Joes mechanically, they're not that different, just like we initially suggested. Where the difference really comes in is when you take their ability to take it to gather all their information, process it, and make the necessary decisions and handle the stresses in the game. I think that's what we were thinking all along. That kind of really goes along with the original idea that we had where uh, we decided that maybe around the plat level, uh, just the sheer raw skill and you know the actions for a minute would 
kind of plateau and it wouldn't be too much of a marginal difference. And I think it's, yeah, it really reinforces that the difference between the pros and the Joes is just the way they gather information and the way they use that information. Yeah, and we haven't scratched the surface of what we were looking at. There's so much more we can gather by using these tools to examine the behavior of great players and what they're doing and what they're thinking. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's for another day. I mean, we'd have yeah. to, that would take a lot, a lot of time, but I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to go into it. But uh, yeah, thanks, Doc, for coming out. Yeah, and doing pleasure. Us, helping us out. It was Had a great really time. great stuff. Yeah. And uh, you guys, thanks for coming and joining us for another episode of Alien Where's Lawless is a Saint. And we'll see you next episode. <laughs>